How is everybody? I'm Cam Jordan, New Orleans Saints defensive end. I'm sitting here with uh, my Trust Levels co-host, my dog, my brother from another, uh, the man that is a, a, a Saints legend, number number two all times of Saints rushing. Um, and that being said, then he decides to go to the Baltimore Ravens, become a force to be reckoned with, and the backfield is crazy. There's Heisman's on top of Heisman's on top of Heisman's uh, in the Baltimore backfield. If you want to right. count the two uh, quarterbacks that are Heisman's, and then of course Alabama's first Heisman Trophy winner in Mark Ingram. Ooh, that boy Cole. Who appreciate Mark. you, dog. You too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as we as we sitting here on B trust levels, B. We've done set out flames. We've done put the world on fire, and we're sitting here with none other than my dog. A, a linebacker who has long been due not only his notoriety but the respect that he deserves throughout the league. We talking about we talking about the all pro that comes down through and, and feels apertures mm. immediately. And if you don't know what aperture is, look at a hole. That's exactly what it is. And my dog Double D feeling it. He's dropping running backs and anything else. Anything else dropping that running through. backs, quarterbacks, whatever back you put in the back, he dropping them. No doubt. Also known as High Breed, Demario Davis. Mm. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening, man? What's double happening? Double D, double D. <laughs> appreciate y'all, boys, man. Levels. Big trust levels. levels. Feel me? Brought to you by Pepsi. Man, hey, somebody got to break down trust levels to me. Now, I done heard it many times, but I just Yo. need to. Since I'm on, let me hear it really broken down. What? Well, well, trust levels is just a combo. You know, you know, they call me Mr. Big Trust, you know, in the mm -hmm. flesh, you know, mm -hmm. yes, sir. And you, okay. we got Mr. Levels. You okay. Yeah. Big Trust, Levels. Big trust okay, levels. okay, I see. So okay, I'm good. Trust levels, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I, and that's hey, on man, the big, because everything we do, we do it big, just how you know, Mr. Doug so that's yeah. what you got. You know, it's just half. Okay. Of, it's just half and half. You know, we go half on the trust levels. Yeah. And yeah. Love to see it. Love to yeah. see it. That's before, okay. Before we get into you know your southern your southern beginnings, let let's start <laughs> off with explain to me hybrid because I say it. I'm like hmm, hybrid. Uh huh. Uh huh. What is a hybrid? Okay. So what I realized is when people never seen something before, you got to give them a definition. You got to define what it is, what's before them. So, you know, in our game, we have hybrids. Everybody know what a hybrid is. Hybrid is like a tweener. You can have a hybrid on offense. That's like a receiver slash tight end, a hybrid. You know, they call it flex and fantasy. Mm -hmm. You know, you call it a taste uh, of like Alvin. Alvin can be a receiver or a running back, like a hybrid. Yep. You know, on defense, you know, you got your, your, your pass rushing linebackers. So they can mm -hmm. be a defensive end or a linebacker. They kind of a tweener. Well, a hybrid is somebody that can go from one position to another. And so I feel like I'm probably one of the first of my kind because I can play D-line a whole game, which I had to do when we played the Rams. Whew. I could, of course, play back a whole game. And I've been putting in so much work at, at, at DB. I feel like I can go and play box safety a whole game. The way I be out there calling the coverages that can jump out there. And so that's you get the essence of a high breed. I love you know it. What I mean? boy, I, a high breed type. That's what I'm saying. Gonna make me sound like offset. Offset. I see boy, high breed. <laughs> I'm out there. Yeah, um, for sure. And then that's course, the concept. Now that's you know fire. Hey, that's that's legit, boy. I hey, like I've been that. saying it for a year. I ain't never known. I, high breed. I see you, boy. <laughs> I'm like, it's something like a hybrid, I think. That's, it. That's why you hear the DBs when they see me make a play in coverage. They are like, I see you hybrid. I see you hybrid. Yeah. You know Locking I mean? down all so. tight ends. Just locksmith. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, something slight. Something slight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, I mean, so we, we can get into it. I, I just need to know, like, you know, I feel like my, my guy, Double D, you've been, you've been everything. But let's let's talk about, you know, the man that you are as, as, as a man of faith. Mm -hmm. And and I really just want to start that from the beginning. Like, you know, for what you are to the locker room, you know, you're you're a, a dominant linebacker. But more than that, off the field, you're a guy that guys come to for guidance. You know, yeah. especially in, especially in walking the, the the path of a faithful walk. Lead, lead yeah. by example. He's an yeah. inspiring brother. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, as a man of faith, 
when did when did that come for you? Has that always been there, or like where where did that start for you? No, man. Um, I feel like I'm a man that, that that's been on both ends of the spectrum. You know, um, I was raised in a church. My grandma, you know, used to have me in church all the time, so I always knew about the word. And like many people, just kind of go up, you know, knowing who God is, knowing who Jesus is. Um, but I really didn't have anything happen in my heart yet. So I just went to church and went to Bible study and things like that because I knew it was the right thing to do. But I mean, off the, off the field, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in showing the streets. Out. Boy, showing yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm running with the girls. I'm, you know, weekend, you know, especially college, high school, like I did everything that everybody do in college. I was doing that in high school. You know what I mean? I started 13. Started I blazed up. I'm blazed up every day. I'm, I'm, I'm drunk every other day. I'm chasing every other day. And the cats that I was rolling with, I mean, I was just a victim of my environment. I, everything that was in my environment, I did it to the max. And so when I got to college, you know, I had been, I got expelled from school when I was in high school from stealing. Uh, got, got, went to jail my freshman year in college. So I was on that end of the spectrum. You know what I'm saying? I felt like, I felt like when I was in jail the last time, I'm like, man, if I keep going at this route, man, I'm in a dead, I'm in a jail a long time. Like, that's just the way my life is. Like, I can be doing everything right, but then when I mess up, it just go off the, mm. off the Richter scale. So I'm like, man, I got to get something right. But then I had a guy that started spending some one-on-one -on -one time with me, um, a guy by the name of Chuck McElroy. He was our team chaplain at Arkansas State. And he started spending one-on-one -on -one time with me. And I don't know, he just started, like, asking me harder questions that nobody had really asked me about, like, what does a Christian life look like? If I was to die on a scale of 10, how confident was it that I was going to go to heaven? You know, that stuff mm -hmm. is used to just sit with me in the mm -hmm. evening. Like, when somebody asks you them type of questions, mm -hmm. you wrestling with it. But then he started to show me, like, in scripture. And then I went to this, he took me to a conference. And in the midst of what he was sharing with me, about like he hit me with one one day the scripture says uh a good tree can't bear bad fruit and a bad tree can't bear good fruit hmm. and that pretty much talking about your heart like if you got a good heart it's gonna bear good fruit you got a bad heart it's gonna bear bad fruit well in my life when i'm looking at my life i always just be the one to say like god know my heart well dang i'm slizzed out my mind in the evening hmm. you know i done mess with who knows who at the end of the day, like, and I'm looking, you know, that type of stuff, it's just too much at, at nighttime when you get ready to go to bed. Like, I can do better than this, you know? And so, like, I'm like, well, that's bad fruit. So I like, I need a heart chain. But then he took me to Ezekiel and it was like, I'll take out your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Mm. I'm like, I need that. Mm. And so, like, I prayed for that heart change and just a few weeks later, like, something just changed, man. Like, it was like a white light hit me. All of a sudden, it was just like, I knew what we was doing right in the faith and what we was doing wrong. Like everybody think it's about doing more good than bad and you can't do more good than bad. Like we all bad, we all corrupted. No matter how hard you try to do good, you're gonna keep falling in that bad. And like the real mystery of the gospel was all you gotta do is get Jesus. If you get Jesus and let him in, he'll change you. Yeah. Like that's all you gotta do. Like it ain't no work to be done. Amen. And for me, like I had all that anxiety of trying to do right and I couldn't. Man, that was easy for me, just letting Jesus in. And when he came in, all of a sudden, I just wanted to go tell everybody about it. Man, it's way easier than you think. And since then, man, I've been on fire for the Lord. Mm -hmm. well, look, as we, as we talk about, I guess, you know, give them, give them the separation. Explain, explain to us that separation between after, after a big play is here and after a big play is here, which, what, what equals Jesus on this. the cross and what equals Roy gather Yuki. up for the command, man? Kamehameha, Kamehameha. Right. <laughs> I, like, you know, tell the people, for those that don't know, when DeMar Davis makes big plays, he gets major celebrations. And if it's a big enough play, you get Jesus on the cross. So, and yeah, so, 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 first of all, let's let it be known that ain't nothing competing with them levels out there. No. My boy chasing them, that legacy out oh. there. Like, that we boy, number hundred. two, we number two all time, about to be number one. Boy, you 20 away, boy. Yeah, we need all that. Man, how that feel first? Let me hear that. How that feel that you <laughs> right there on the cusp? Like we still got levels to achieve. So, hey, look, hey. Because it's biggest, still levels. That's what I'm saying. You know, the biggest downfall is like when you look at that number, you like, I can get this here. 
And then you go start going dry spell. You'd be like, you know what? Let me just focus on what I can control. I talk about process all the time. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm not feeling. <laughs> is that the Rona? <laughs> yeah. You know? oh, hey, when, when you when you ain't focused, not the like Rona. when you focus on like the one object, that's when you start messing up. That's when you start like falling farther and farther away from it. So I just keep my head down. Hey, you know me. I'm like, I'm here for these hands. Everybody knows yeah. I'm here to play the run. I'm here to play yeah. the run. If you decide to pass this mug, we gonna get active. <laughs> my dog showed my dog showed the OTAs like I'm here for these hands. <laughs> like, <laughs> who says that? And OTAs like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know I ain't what I mean? Got no though. gloves on, no gloves. Like I'm here for these hands. Yo, hey, you know what time it is? We gotta stop this run. Cause once yeah. we, once we eliminate this run, then they have to pass it. Yeah. Like if not, then you're gonna catch one of these. You're gonna catch one of these famous former defensive line Bill Johnson quotes. Is it gonna be run or is it gonna be passed? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't yeah. need it to be either or. I just need it to be one. Yeah. Right. 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 And that right, being right. said, from the most complete defensive end in football, aka NFC Player of the Month. And of November, that double dude. D. Well, y'all are firing me everywhere, man. Off the field, on the field, spiritually, physically. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, y'all, I love y'all, man. Hey, y'all. Hey, same brother, same brother, same man, brother. We see you shining over there. Like-minded folks, man, and, and y'all keep the gas pedal down. Y'all keep a brother having to keep going. So I appreciate y'all, man. Look, hey, also, we, sure. we we done talked about just just the the. I don't want to say it out loud anymore. I don't like the, the verb which I was going to use. We were going to start out the, the tail end of the career. I was going to say tip, and I didn't like it. Is that, is that what you <laughs> like? Yeah, either way. We started at the tail end of your career. Like, let's let's bring it all the way back. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't even, we didn't explain who you were, the man, the myth, the, the Mississippi mud legend. Like, Mississippi me, mud legend. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you can. You I, you should be able to hear it in his voice, but that man fresh out the silk. Fresh out. Fresh out the silk. M I no, crooked out. letter, crooked letter I. Crooked letter, <laughs> crooked letter I. Humpback, humpback I. In the flesh. That's all I'm saying. They say, they say the sit bo- them sit boys built differently. I, I For seen, sure. I've seen some across the league. They're normally country strong. When they be like, oh, he country strong. He either from Silk, Bama, sometimes like Carolinas. Boy had hair on his chest coming out the seventh grade. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Like Florida, but not like the Miami or the Tampa, Florida. Like the, the stuff no, that nobody different. talking like the poker somethings. You know, it's different, it's different man. Like that. <laughs> yeah, it's it different, man. One thing you're gonna notice out, out, out that silk, man. You first, you're gonna notice, notice our accent, you're always gonna pick that up. Two is they're gonna be country strong, but then three is they're gonna be that, that chip, that chip gonna be on their shoulder, way different. You know, it's like when you're coming out that mud, it's ain't nothing ever been handed to you. Like, ain't nobody handing you nothing out of that sip. The only way you make it out of Mississippi like a trap, to tell you the truth, especially from, for black brothers, like, it's just the way, man, you seen, you seen the election in Mississippi won by a landslide. Like, you know, it ain't, it, it's hard, you know, like making it out and being African-American, A, because the way they do the schools down there, like, Mississippi is already 50th in education. So imagine being 50th in education and then there being an education disparity between you know what what environment you live in, so right. different suburbs to different standpoint, areas, to... you already set back, you know, and so academics going to affect intellect, so being able to process and decision making, and then also, uh, unless you got a, a family that 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 is of affluence, you're not going to really be traveling, so all you know is the sip, and so you think this this is just the way of life, you know what I mean? Um, and then depending on you know what kind of coaches around, you ain't really gonna have nobody putting you exposure mm-hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Like that, you ain't really getting on the scene. So like I give you an example, like I built a 707 travel team. Man, we went out and started traveling around the states. Man, them boys, three tournaments, they were ranked number 14 in the nation. Mm. Because I mean, it's just them boys special, but they just don't get that type of exposure. So when you do see the cat, the few that do make it out, they just have a different type of chip on their shoulder like you know they always got to prove themselves you know mm-hmm. you, you know and, and and y'all done seen it too man you come in the locker rooms all the time of cats that just be entitled they just used to somebody so when things don't go their way you know they don't know how to put their hand in the dirt and grind but when that's all you know like man you be grinding it's and you don't even really have to grind like that but that's all you know yep. like you can't stop it's in you 
Yeah, you know what I mean? So Not like that. In you. Yeah, it just it just it's just a way of life and it becomes like a characteristic trait. So like you ain't never gonna meet a Mississippi cat that ain't always grinding. Yeah. You know, you you just ain't gonna meet it. So where in Mississippi do you hail from, brother? Where from? Brandon, Mississippi, man. I was I was raised in Brandon. I was born in Collins, Mississippi. Where, where which is that? Our oh, Brandon. What's that? What's that? Metro, right by Jackson. Okay. It's the metro area, Central. Central gotcha. Jackson. There we go. Gotcha. Collins. Gotcha. You know, I went to Belma, so I done drove through Mississippi a number of times. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I'm yeah, kind of yeah. familiar. Right with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. so we right there in the middle, right there in the middle, metro area. Metro. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then of course you you went to uh uh, uh high school Arkansas Mississippi, State. and then I'll say I, I need to know I need to know how you yeah, got to Arkansas okay. State because you know you know there's a hierarchy in 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 our uh and probably we ain't skipping levels. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Probably, we probably like, levels. probably like, there's a hierarchy of like where you come from, from college wise throughout every locker room in the league. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, you right. don't hear me. You don't hear me drop. Oh boy, you you know you, you don't know what you're talking about. You come from you know southern southern Mississippi Tech. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. There, There's a hierarchy. There's, there's southern something Mississippi Tech. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you you you've heard me say, drop many a lot. That? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so either way, you know what I'm saying? Tell us how you got to Arkansas State out out, out the sale. Like what are the offers you had? Like how did you get to Arkansas State? What position you, know, you was playing, man? Yeah, like cuz cuz I we do know I see like, receiver from, here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. you know you know, you know he go drop it. He was like receiver like he hey. he was the the playmaker. Go play get him. Hey, hey, you the rock. Don't no, make so happy, man. <laughs> man. But check so I mean, I was that receiver. I played receiver my, you know, my whole high school career. I didn't go to defense until my senior year. My coach was like, man, I don't think you're you dropping too many scholarship. passes. We're going to let you hit somebody. <laughs> no, nah, he was just like, you know, I had got kicked out of school. So when I got kicked out of school, my coach was pretty much like, I mean, I heard this, you know, behind the scenes. They was pretty much like, we ain't finna let no thug mm. be the face of our program. He ain't finna do nothing here. So, like, I went from being an underclassman to watch. You know, I led the whole team in receiving yards and touchdowns my sophomore year to my junior year. Like, they they probably threw me 14, 15 passes the whole season. And uh, so my defensive coach was just like, man, you ain't going to get no scholarship playing over there. Um, you need to come play defense. Man, I hated defense too, bro. <laughs> like, I hated defense with a passion. Why? You ain't and like to tackle or what was it? It wasn't even – I didn't even glory. know how to tackle. Not enough glory? Hey, if you like, ask a wide receiver – Nobody ever showed me. I played DB when I played, so I was just trying to get interceptions in. So it was just like, man, I just wanted the ball. Yeah. Hey, and, first of all, uh, WD, you sitting at six, two and a half, six three. Man, I what was do you mean you like, were playing? What do you mean you were playing DB? Explain. I was six two, one eighty, one ninety. Oh, okay. You know, you was DB. Yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah, that's yeah, good length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, that, yeah, was, that might have dropped you in a four or five star Oscar situation. Was, that boy went to Arkansas and put the grown man on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I, like, I need, I need to know the weight. I was like, that's nah. easy. I was like, the WD, I know. Ain't no way, boy. You go from Mississippi to Arkansas. You go from country to country, er? Country, country, dog. No, when I went to Arkansas State, dog, I got the scholarship to go out there, bro. It, man, it Wait. was four hours. Man. What other scholarships did you have though? Like. Uh, Southern Miss, Southern Miss. I had all the all the, all the swag schools, Alcorn, Jackson State, mm -hmm. Mississippi Valley. Um, so I had all them, and, and but my my main two was uh, Southern Miss and Arkansas State. Everybody thought I was gonna go to Southern Miss, but bro, I, I, I went on my recruiting trip to Arkansas State. Dog, I had time of my life, and it, <laughs> and it was sold up. I went about on the whole ride back. I'm sold like, up. I'm going to school here. I'm going to school here, <laughs> dog. <laughs> And it was out the state too, bro. Like, dog. Yeah. So I got back to the crib. This really how I knew. So out of 20 dudes that was on our recruiting trip, 20, uh, no, 25 dudes on our recruiting trip, 20 of them signed scholarships there for my, my recruiting trip. And yeah. we still boys to this day. Like, we was the ones that changed the program around. But anyways, I'm riding back. I get back to the crib. I had, when I hooped one night, dog. Man, I got in the car. I come back in my garage, bro. I'm a, I'm, I'm an emotional dude. Like I cry like with certain moves, but I ain't just like the boohoo and type. <laughs> right. No, Listen, no, explain, bro, WD. What do you I mean you cry up, during certain movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah explain. Yeah. Certain movies, Some stuff pull on your heart, man. Some movies pull on like, your like hey, seven, King, like seven pounds. Lion, Lion, Lion like King seven pounds. John Q. Every time. No. Oh, John Q will get you too. In certain movies, you gonna cry, bro. If you just seven hey, pounds. You, I give you seven the only pounds, one, I, bro. I watched you watch that one thing, time. The one, one time, time on a on a plane, we was thirty thousand feet in the air. That's the only time I think something. I said, "Hey, you have you seen, precipitation? You can lean on the window and just." 
Have you seen Collateral uh, Collateral Beauty? No doubt. No hey, doubt. It made the same way. I think it's the same director. Maybe not, but I don't know. But listen, so <laughs> I pull up in the. I you pull said up Lion in the, King, uh, though. Explain Lion King. Bro, when Mufasa died. You got somebody, the dad, dad, get up! Somebody. I need my help. Somebody, anybody. anybody, and you were like, help. "Bro, y'all there by yourself? Can't nobody hear him, man. This boy just lost his daddy, man. Daddy slump, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey oh. boy, any daddy just saved his life, gone. But anyway, <laughs> but I pull up at the crib, so I pull up at the crib, man. This uh, Marvin Sapp song that just came out, uh, never would have made it, bro. I pull in, I pull in the driveway, dog. Never. Yeah, and, and just came on, dog. Right, I just like I just had a flash of every bad situation I had been in before. You know what I mean? Like being in clubs, then they're shooting. You know, just all kind of stuff, and just like all my homeboys, never got a chance to get a scholarship to go out of state. Now I got a chance to go to scholarship, get a scholarship to go out of state. And it was just like, man, I got to make the most of this chance. Like I'm the one. It was like, I'm the chosen one. Yes, sir. And, and bro, like, no, I just, man, I just started crying so hard, bro. Like, I couldn't stop. It was like five minutes. Like, the song steady going on. I'm stronger. <laughs> bro, I was like, man, all of it. It was like everything I done went through that made me ready for this yes, moment. Yes, sir. Yes, bro, sir. I got off the phone, no lie, bro. I had all my visits. Arkansas State was the first visit I went to. I called my mom, like, uh, mom, I don't care who else, like, call or whatever. I'm going to Arkansas State. She like, wait, what, wait, wait. You know, mom wants you to stay close to home. She like, let's, yeah. let's just go to Southern Myth. I'm like, I, 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 it's already, already decided, mama, I'm yeah. gone. Yeah. And, and ever since then, bro, like that was, that was the way, that was the way. All right, I need, I need to know. I mean, I need to, I need, I need to know what Mark may, Mark probably knows. Like when it, when it, Double D, the man I know that watches, you know, 35 hours of film in a 24 hour day, when did that happen? She, but like, when did that transition happen? Like, tell me about three piece suit double D. When, when did he become? You know, probably Stacy Adams back in college because that was the wave back in two thousand eight. With two thousand seven, when we was in college. But when did when did the three piece suit come? Because for me, it came in the league. For for my stories with you, I need I need the world to know. My brother been sharp since sophomore year, Sadie's man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like my my brother been sharp. Y'all think he one of the best? You know, best suit wearing having brothers in the league yeah. now. You heard it that started man. before he got to NFL. Tell him, Double D, briefcase. Hey, you hey, heard the man said he grew up in church now. You know grandma had him with some three pieces yeah. on. No, no, I real talk, bro. That's all I used to wear. Like, I used to wear sweats all the time, really. Um, like, dressing just really wasn't my thing. I really didn't, didn't too much care for it. And But right around, I think a little bit after I came, came to Christ, man, I just started looking at stuff different. Like, I, what, what happened, so I came to Christ in 2008. And so between 2008, was it 2009, yeah, 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 2008 to 2009, like that one year, bro, it was like when I came to Christ, like I probably came to Christ and I had like a 16, 17 year old mind, but by the time like that year finished, I probably had like a 28, 29 year old mind, like all the maturity, like I don't had good people pouring into me my whole life, I just wasn't listening. You know what I mean? And it was just like all the wisdom of my mama, my grandma, you know what I'm saying? Like all the the the, the, the mentors that had tried to help me before, it's just like all that wisdom was there and it was just unlocked. So I started to think about like, man, if I was going in the classroom and I was a teacher, like how the student look when he come in and, and him sitting on the front row. Like I just started sitting on the front row, bro. I started dressing up every day. Like I, I started carrying my laptop and briefcase like around, like bro, I was so locked in. It was just like, man, I'm going to handle my business like a man. I'm not going to handle my business like no boy no more. Yeah. So I just, it just changed. Like, mm -hmm. so my, my, that's, my what Tam, that's what Tam, that's what, that's what, that's what you, uh, my wife Tam told you about how was, when she met me, I had a suit on. Like, bro, I was going to class, man. I wasn't studying no girls. I was locked in. Like, I'm locked in. I'm going to get my work. I'm going to go to practice and I'm going to go home. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it to the league. I'm, I'm locked in. I'm going to work out. Like, bro, I was so locked in. And then you talk about the film. I just went up there and asked my coach one day, like, how do he break down the film? And he showed me, like, how to sort it. And so when I went from – all I used to watch was just the games. Like, mm -hmm. after the game, I'd look and see what I did good, what I did bad. But he showed me, like, how to prepare for an opponent. And, bro, the first game he showed me how to study, dog. I went out there and got a uh, conference player of the week. I had, like, two picks, a sack, a whole bunch of tackles. And it was like I knew everything. Boy, got hungry. 
Well, yeah, hey, after that, once, once I realized I, I could know every play, oh, it was a wrap. So, like, was that was just for. that. Oh, and then when I got to the league, my boy, the Brick and Sean Ferguson, he taught me the game on how to how to get them suits right. He taught me how to get – man, that boy had so many suits, dog. But he taught Office me the alignment. game. like Yeah, 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 offensive lineman. Most swaggy offensive <laughs> lineman I ever seen in my life, dog. And he showed me the game. And I was in New York. So, you know, in New York, you got to know fashion. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And, and ever since then, I've been, I've been pristine. Hey, I'm Christine glad. I'm glad clean. you. Hey, I'm glad you brought up New York. That boy, vocabulary elite now. <laughs> hey, pristine clean. <laughs> that boy, that hey, boy said he, he, he got, didn't drop by he got an honorary. Five. Look, he got an honorary doctor somewhere. Like somebody that boy done didn't bless drop by seven, eight, nine words. I'm gonna have to re- recap the L. <laughs> yeah, boy, silly. Had the minds. Hey, I'm there's a unlock. reason. There's a reason they say middle linebackers are smart now. Look. They don't just command the, the defense. Uh-huh. They go off that's, the field. That's different. You know, this that's is this brother Demario that Davis. That's, <laughs> that's Chaplin? Are you a chaplain yet? Chaplin, Demario Davis, at times. You can confide in him. The man is going to drop some knowledge. <laughs> the man, the man going to drop yeah, some boy, knowledge. Silly, man. You know? y'all, y'all, y'all my big brothers, dog. Man. Y'all, y'all, y'all <laughs> you older than me, me, Double D. <laughs> I can't be your big brother. You older than me. <laughs> no, you was 19 and as a senior in high school. No, you were. You came for the sip. You was 25 as a sophomore in high school. You, you know you older than me. <laughs> hey, y'all boy, silly, man. Hey, no, no doubt. But but you did lead up to <laughs> New York. And, and so, you know, I, I'm just going to put that out there since you won't. Drafted third round out of Arkansas State. Probably the highest draft pick since since. But it's been pimping since Ben Pimp, man. <laughs> you came out of Arkansas State, was drafted to the Jets in the third round of 2012. You know, me and Mark had just finished our rookie year, heading to our second didn't year. Didn't we play each other, though? Didn't, didn't we play each other? When, when, they, when they had Geno. Ac- Geno. Uh, we, we had to. Wait, yeah, wait, what year you was at? Uh, what yeah, we, you was yeah, at yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we played. But y'all beat the crap out of us, Mark. <laughs> I know. I had a great game. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, how I remember. He wouldn't even oh, let us get to the Jets. He said, "Wait, did we play y'all in college?" Yeah, yeah, well, now we gonna rewind. We ain't gonna pass this. Man, up. them boys was so mine. stacked, dog. <laughs> bro, y'all was so stacked, bro. I'm like, man, dog. Everybody on their team look like they bench press four or five, dog. I'm like, man, what in the world? Cause we did, bro. Y'all That's because they were they were sitting they were sitting with three first rounders at running backs. Three they were. Him, Trent, my, okay, my three and uh, two first rounders in a second. Oh, and yeah. Eddie, first rounder. And then bruh. Derrick Henry was the second rounder. After there was TJ Yeldon. And TJ and, and Blake and, and, and Drake and Drake. There we go. And bro, when, when, you, when, you, when your kick returner, when your kick returner got bigger biceps than the other team defense alignment. You know it's gonna be a long day, dog. <laughs> Javier Arenas, dog, was the slowest kick return I ever seen in my life, bro. He was a beast. He was a beast. He was a beast for sure. <laughs> All right, now we can go to the Jets. But I yeah, had to get back to. I was like, you don't, you don't smash my man. Did we, did we play y'all? We ran. We, we, we ran gonna bring y'all. you up. We gonna, we gonna build you up. We gonna bring you back. Thirty-five back zero. Thirty-five zero was the final score. I've never been goose egg before. I've never bro. been goose egg before. What's that it's hurts? Bad. That hurts. At least, at least do the uh, the Tampa Bay route and put three points up. <laughs> hey, bro, chill, chill. No, we good, we good, we good. But with all that being said, he was the leading tackler on his team every time he stepped on the field, I believe. All right. So hey, so tell me, uh, man, and then you think about you the league. You get to the league. You with the Jets. Yeah. Then you go to the Browns. Yeah, I went to the Browns for a year, dog. And then I you go in, back to the Jets. Went back to the Jets. Wait. So okay, so okay, so so. But explain to me how you decided to go back to the Jets. So the Jets drafted you, loved you, you balled. Mm-hmm. Then you signed so, this, somehow. We, so Rick, we played so the Mario when he was with the Jets, bro. He was a dog. I remember that. Yeah. So when we that was signed him, when we was in New Orleans. I'm like, we getting a straight dog because <laughs> they weren't respecting you. But I was a running back, and I watched the tape. I watched the tape on how you was blitzing and baptizing running backs. I'm like, yeah, this dude, uh, I'm going to have to bring my stuff for this game. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I knew I was running up through there with ferociousness. We played <laughs> dog because that boy was bringing hat and hamstrings and glutamuses. <laughs> <laughs> glutamuses. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah had the jets, he had the jets turned up. Uh, <laughs> Dancing. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah y'all y'all routed us, man. Hey, I was giving y'all my best effort out there, boy. I was giving my best effort to slow y'all down. Y'all ended up routing. You broke that long one at the end, bro. And it was a touchdown, but they said my foot was out of bounds, oh. but it was never out of bounds, so that should be oh. one more. <laughs> my dog knew exactly what I'm talking hey, about. Yeah, the oh. screen, the screen where I stiff-armed him, kind of stumbled, dove in. I looked at the ref. He ran back to the seven-yard line. I said, no, you did <laughs> I said, Sean yeah, Payton, throw the challenge. He did <laughs> darn dirty. And we looked at the films. A... The films didn't lie. The films <laughs> said I was in bounds. So they cheated me. I should have one more career touchdown than I do now. But... Hey, all right, so give me, the, give me the decision since I never really asked. Give me the decision. What brought you to the Saints? You go from Jets, Brown. I, oh, I'm really, you, I'm tell gonna... me how you got to the Browns because nobody looks at the Browns scoop. like, yeah, I'm that's get, for me. I'm going to give you the inside scoop. So when I was coming out, right, I'm the number one rated uh, free agent pro, pro football focus. Number one coming out. So phone hot. Pro football. Now, the first time I hit free agency, it was crickets. Now, phone chirpy. You know what I mean? So I already got in my mind where I'm trying to go. I'm trying this, to go. This is, after, this is the, after the Browns or this is after this, the Jets? After the Jets. So I, got, I went to the Browns for a year, got traded yeah. back to the Jets. And then I played the year on one year contract. Boom. So you had free agency. free agency with the Jets. So you got traded to the Browns. So, so my first free agency, I came out to my four. I went into free agency. Browns. Jets didn't try to resign me. You know what I'm saying? I went to free agency. Then I had a couple teams reach out, end up signing with the Browns. So I signed with the Browns on a two year, played one year, and then the second year they traded me back to the Jets. Real crazy how that whole story and scenario That's went disrespectful. through. I, I, did you slap somebody? <laughs> Look, you are. It was, was it was cool because I was I was good like I was cool to do my second year in Cleveland but when I went back to the Jets it was a great opportunity they just lost they they just lost their inside backer uh like I thought I was gonna be going back to be a backup it was Dave and, and D Lee so I think they're gonna put me as the backup my boy Dave ended up turning down a deal with them I think they I think they gave him a, a trash offer so he 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 left and that left me to be the, the Mike backer so I, I I knew when I came back I was a different player. Like my whole offseason, oh. I had shifted my mindset. This was the this was the beginning of the hybrid. Who's gonna put it on the display? Hybrid. That's and when so the hybrid I, showed up. I've been waiting. Hey, and I've then so once once that happened, dog, I just got there and, and did my thing, and then I came out. And so what happened was, but we get the free agency the, the second time, and I'm trying to go somewhere with a quarterback. I'm like, I gotta play with a quarterback. But the only thing, Tam and I had ex New Orleans out of mind. Not because we didn't want to play in New Orleans, but it was too close to home. You know, you playing close to home, man, that phone going to ring off mm -hmm. the hook. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Everybody no, trying to whatever, be down Whatever you're making, they making too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we was trying to avoid We that. made it. So we were just like, New Orleans ain't even an option. But we had teams calling. We had teams we were looking at. Then uh, AG called me when we was on the, phone, on the phone. He's like, look, man, I'm standing on the table for you down here. He was like, uh, if I can get these folks to put you a real offer in, will you come? I said, and I knew AG from, you know, my New York days. I said, uh, I was man, wondering you, when Aaron Glenn was going to connect. That's Aaron Glenn, our, our DB coach, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Uh, <laughs> we know, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. People, people don't, don't know. People, so we got to bring the people appreciate in. It, appreciate it. Aaron Glenn, our DB coach, future defensive coordinator, future head coach. Yes, make sure put they put some respect on his name. Respect. So he called me. He was like, "Hey, man, um, if I get it right, can you will you come?" I'm like, "Man, you make sure they get the paper right. I'm I'm on the way to say no more." <laughs> and I just started thinking about how good a team I had been watching. I had been watching y'all boys. I had been looking at how much swagger y'all had. No Juden gonna put up forward in, and then that defense out there creating turnovers. I'm like, man, they got a lot of energy. I, I definitely trying to be a part of that. Next thing I know, my agent called me. He was like, "Man, New Orleans just called, put in an offer." And he was like, uh, he was like, it was Denver and, 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 and New Orleans. And he was like, do you care which one you go to? And I was like, I got Tom Condon. He the best in the business. He, I said, Tom, listen, this is why I got you, man. Do your thing. Whichever one, whichever one sign, you know, uh, you get, th then that's what it's supposed to be. And we were on a flight. We were getting ready to go do a speaking engagement. Now, I wanted New Orleans. I wanted New Orleans, but I wasn't going to get in the way of God. Like, God, you got something else. Cause my spiritual mentor is in Denver, and um, this ministry we're part of is in Denver. So I'm like, man, I ain't gonna say no to God if that's where you want me at. You know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. boom, we on a flight. 
all I see is my phone uh, blowing up. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. I'm like, congratulations what? They're like, uh, congrats on the deal, man. Congrats on the deal. I'm like, man, where am I going? <laughs> 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 Boy ain't even pig. Hey, he really left it to the agent. Hey, you figured out. I gotta, I gotta take wifey out for a date, so I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, for sure. But man, it was a blessing, bro. And and, and man, I was so happy when it was New Orleans, dog. And uh, it, I, it it done went ten times better than I would have ever imagined, man. I mean, like coming into a locker room. I've been close with all my teammates on on, on all my team. But like when you talk about like brothers, Mark, you already know, man. Like for sure, like family, tight. dog. Tight. Family, it's just, it just, it's different, no, bro. I'm telling you though, like you was a dog, bro. That year, like you said, before you hit free agency, when you was with the Jets, bro. I told you I watched that film, and I'm like, man, this boy is a dog. <laughs> I heard we got you. I'm like, man, we got the true Mike that we need out here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then, right? Uh, just seeing you over the three, four years you've been in New Orleans. Was it four years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third year, yeah. bro. You done flourished. Like, yeah. third, you look, he was, he came in 2018. And I looked at you. I was like, I was like, bro, you played him. I said, you tell me about him. He was like, he come down here. I was boy, like, all right. Bringing that hat. To cover. <laughs> smart. That boy calling out plays when we was playing him. So I knew what I was getting. I knew what we was getting. I'm like, yeah. they did something there with that signing. Yeah. And that boy then elevated his game each year. No and doubt. you talk about the best mic, full blown, all around mic in the game, bro. Back. Look, hey, I'm going to tell you how I, Mark, I'm going to tell you how I know my dog, Double D, different, right? His first year, 2018, like, you know, I'd seen him at the Jets, Brown. Like, when you come for the Browns, nobody trusts you can play football. <laughs> so, either way, you know, you come over here with the Saints. I'm like, all right, like, he a dog. He eating, he eating. One, the, I, it was Tampa at Tampa. My man get a penalty for hitting somebody too hard, <laughs> right? And instead, you know how guys, like, whine a little bit, right? Like, oh, I can't believe, what? How can we get that penalty? That My man turns up from this point on. Oh, are you going to hit me with a flag? You thought that was a hard hit? And the next time I lay a, a dude out, you're going to know it's a hard hit. Hey, at this point, I said, oh, he different, different. I said, hey, my dude was just laying on the ground, right? Just, yeah. Oh, dang. <laughs> and that man. come out, and my dog, my dog over here like this. You think that was a hard hit? And I'm telling, I kid you not, the play later, yum. I said, oh, we, we lie. <laughs> you know, hey, defense is going bananas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. going crazy. Turn the offense up. We over there. Hey, whole team just going crazy. And that's how I knew. I was like, oh, this, he's different, different. And hey, since then, dog, it's been, it's been so high crazy, dog. What was so crazy? The first one, I kind of hit him, you know? And I'm like, bro, you going to throw a flag for that? Okay, just watch. Bro, I killed him the second one. <laughs> I didn't care like I'm listen, I came hit him. The ref looked at me. I looked at him. He like <laughs> and put it back in his pocket. Dog. I told you it's your fault I did that too. That's what I'm saying. I tried the ref was like, was like if I throw another flag he might actually hurt this. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to be NFL sportsman of the week, show you how to hit somebody, but now I'm really showing you. <laughs> Heads up football. You know what? <laughs> Right, no, it's crazy, man. Uh, I forgot about that. They snubbed my dog, bro, in the Pro Bowl, but God works in mysterious ways because you was an all pro, first team. Mm. First team. Mm. So what mm. kind of chip that put on you when you wasn't voted into the Pro Bowl, but everybody around the league know you really all pro, though. Yeah, yeah, right. That, that, that's, that's what's up. Like, I mean, not getting voted to the Pro Bowl, it, it, it don't really, it, it didn't really affect me, like, my mom and my wife big on making me process my emotions. You know, and I went through them and uh, I really was frustrated. You know what I mean? Like I dropped a few tears, but my frustration didn't come from, you know what I mean? Not getting a Pro Bowl. Like that award really don't mean nothing to me. It was the frustration of just imagine going through your life and, and never getting seen for who you are. Right. You know what I mean? And so that frustration, of, like if you see my book, my book is called Unsuccessful Champion. You know what I mean? And it's like, I felt like I don't have so much, so many times where I was just unsuccessful, you know, but like being a true champion means like I'm a champion in my faith, like, because God sees mm -hmm. me, I'm already mm -hmm. victorious. So like, mm -hmm. it's hard as a man to have to constantly remind yourself that like, dang, like sometimes man ain't going to see you, but as long as God see you, you're right. good. Exactly. And that's what I went back to. So I was good. So after I got past my little process and like, Man, I'm frustrated. I got to go through this again. Like another year, I done, I done gave them and they just don't see me. Well, it's cool. What? Hey, what happened? Hold on a sec.
Also, I'm good. I'm good. Hey, no, you might be good. Also, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 you got a halo bright. around you. Hey, you still you shining halo bright. You, right now. you the... glowing, bro. <laughs> hey, Don hey, the you, you a came a chosen man. But, hey, we might we might go ahead and throw that slow music underneath you as you going, boy. Hey, you was hitting the ride. <laughs> so, so, uh, man, I, I was just like, once I got past that, man, I'm just like, you know what? God see me. You know what I'm saying? That's all that matter. Then, boom, I got the all pro. And it was just like, man, cool. Chippo. Told you. Yeah, cool. I told cool. you. Like, I'm like that. I'm nice. <laughs> <laughs> and cool, cool. And so at the end of the day, that's what, like, what I play for, man. Like, I'm always trying to glorify God. So, like, it's going to be times where man see you and man going to tell you everything and you really not. It's going to be times where man don't see you and tell you nothing when you really are. Mm. The main thing that's always important is the fact that God see you and as long as he see you, and he giving you the blessing that he giving you, that's all you need to be concerned about. And so that's why I try to stay in that lane, because now, whether I'm up or whether I'm down, it all feel the same. Yes, sir. Hey, that's what you said. Hey, keep the main thing the main thing. It's hey, not, D. D., it's not I, about I, what I we working you, with. It's I needed doing. that message. You t- yeah. you speaking to us, but I needed that message. You just gave yeah. me a faith boost. Boy's yeah. in trouble this week. <laughs> hey, hold on. Let me ask a question. Cam, Cam, huh? are, are, not to change the subject, but are you telling the people what we're doing with Say Her Name campaign, though? No. Oh, hey, honestly, you've been our second defensive player on the podcast. I got so excited my dog was on. I'm, I'm, a, in fact, I'm gonna handle that now. Hey, For sure. all right. So, in, in, in this social climate, how we are acting, you know, for as a man that that I know of you being in the community, as much as you are a chaplain, not only to our teammates, but to many of people outside of football um, and your spiritualistic walk, um, you know, it'd be reminisced one to mention, you know, you're also the founder of the Devoted Dreamers Foundation. Um, and that's huge in, in, in your philanthropic efforts to give back to your community. I mean, you, you have a seven on seven team, um, you have your own charity, uh, but even, you know, that has even affected the saints as a whole in terms of how we've had to navigate uh, this off season, this quarantine, this, you know, the lack of a, of a, a training camp, mm-hmm. but the, you know, what's been pushed on people, like you can't run and hide from it. what has been pushed to the forefront of, of our societal awareness is the black lives matter movement. And, you know, there's been negative connotations of, Oh, you know, you know, they're just rioters. They're just looking to stir the pot, whatever it is. But, even with the under, even with with all the negative connotations, it's the underlying factors that have been brought to the forefront of the light, which is there has been a targeting of young black men and women. Not only you know this year, last year, two years ago, four years ago, but for the last four hundred years that have been, I would say we've progressed as a nation, but we still got so much to go, so much yeah. further to go, and people like you know you, Malcolm Jenkins, Kenny Stills, uh, have, have have sort of been sort of leaders in terms of the football world, you know, I, I, I feel like I'd like to include myself, but I don't think I'm that far ahead, advanced enough to, to even enter this conversation. Oh, you've been in there, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? Bro. Like, Hey, I yeah. swing, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing haymakers. Like I, I'm, I'm low blowing it. You know, like, I feel like my swings uh, are, are like Roy Jones juniors. You know what I'm saying? I'm throwing one of these <laughs> and you out here with the, with the Tysons, <gash> you know what I'm saying? In terms, in terms of, yeah. In terms of not only being able to address our situations, but, but to pinpoint exactly how we can attack it. Um, and so, you know, me, you, AK, Drew Brees, uh, Malcolm Jenkins, Thomas Moore said, Teron Armstead, uh, a part of the Saints have sort of directed, led, uh, come together with a lot Craig of Robinson. excellent. Yeah, Craig Robertson. I'm, uh, hey, be reminiscent. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's, hey, I was trying to take care of my day. I got you. Craig Robertson, you know, being so on the focal point of how we're going to go about as a team, as a collective, to to bring forth some social justice and just in terms of knowledge given um, and have been able to direct the narrative of the, the Say Her Name campaign to the Saints forefront, as well as the Saints fans base as then pushes through the NFL and the continuum of um, with the Say Her Name campaign that has brought to light how many how many different topics we're we're, you know, more than multiple, halfway through the season, you know, we've, we've brought the multiple, multiple topics, but beyond just football players, we brought in a collective of magnificent Queens in terms of, you know, the likes of Taylor Rooks to, you know, Tasha cloud, um, you know, there's been the players coalition has thrown in and given so much uh, just the, the amount of education that we're able to then 
assess, assort, and push out has been tremendous. And before, you know, I guess before, just, that's just a statement. I guess it's double D, like, what more can we do as a team or how much farther can we go? And where do you see us taking this? No, that's good. I mean, when you look at social justice as a, as a whole, first of all, bro, you just killed that. Man, phenomenal, he brother. Ripped it, didn't he? Man, he ripped oh it. my goodness, boy. I told you. That bro, boy don't you play is. when it comes to intro and something now. <laughs> hey, I'm a one take, I'm a one take guy. That's not the hey, thing. Bro, Man, you intro phenomenal. me, shoot, that's something. <laughs> but, but I just think, you know, when it comes to the social justice landscape, it's, it's, it's A, it's awareness, like become aware of what's going on around you. If there's injustice going on around you and you're not noticing it, uh something may be wrong with you you know and so you may be your perspective your perception it may be what you're looking at uh if it, it, it could be you know so become aware of what's going on around you and once you become aware of it the next thing you do to do is to become educated on it mm. don't just think because you see it that you know what's going on like become educated that's how you put yourself in the shoes of other people that's how you have empathy like, and once you become educated and become aware, then you can become active and you can figure out. And I try to tell people all the time, as a human, your heart, your spirit is going to kick on once you become educated. Once you know, you see what's wrong and you, and you learn what's going on, your heart will tell you what to do. If you care about kids, you will find a way to help kids. If you care about uh, uh, women, you, you, uh, if you care about people who are in situations that you've been, that, that, that are similar to, they remind you of situations that you've been through, you will know how to become active. And um, I just think like what we've been able to do with the black women, that's another type of injustice that has been swept under the rug. We'll talk about sexism and we'll talk about racism, but we rarely talk about the intersectionality of racism and sexism, which is black women oh, and, wow. so, and women of color. And so dealing with that and bring it to light a lot of issues that they face and it's just another way life. for in, yeah everyday in, life a life to just become aware become educated and then become uh active and so this is us being active by just sharing the message with other people um you know finding ways to get involved finding organizations um you know just learning one new thing and and and, and changing the way uh, we talk about microaggressions, like learning about those microaggressions and just changing the way that, that we talk and think little subtle things that we do makes a big difference in changing their everyday life. And so it's so many ways. Uh, but one thing I will say is I'm encouraged, man, uh, just about our country in general. Um, when you look at that, we had the largest voter turnout in history. Mm -hmm. You're not going, you're not, and, and, and by, by multiples, um, yeah. you know, you're not going to tell me that 2020 didn't play a big part of that. Man. And you're not going to tell me that athletes being active and, and vocal in their spaces and doing more than um, being an athlete, being an athlete, doing more than just, and not just shutting up and dribbling or shutting up and playing, but being active out on the forefront didn't play a huge part in that. Um, and everybody that was a part of the fight played a huge part in that. And it just shows you what, how the power that we have as people when we work together and we got to use that as motivation to continue to go forward and not just fighting for uh, uh, black and brown communities, not just fighting for women, not just fighting for black women, not just fighting for immigrants, not just fighting for the LGBT community, but fighting for all people to make sure that we all treat, uh, treated equally and all treated fairly. That's the only way we're going to have a, a just and, and loving world. And so that's what we should all continue to fight for and never settle for less. Them my brothers. Them my dogs. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Y'all did the Say Her Name campaign. I said, I know those brothers. I got a piece <laughs> of that. I helped and I didn't, but I did. <laughs> I love them guys. Man, that's man y'all y'all really the truth, man. For real, man. Y'all some good brothers, man. And uh, Demario Davis, a true humanitarian. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> We appreciate y'all, man. I love y'all, man. The death for real, man. I admire y'all boys, boys too. Y'all inspire me. Y'all hey, inspire no, me. Appreciate hey, Mark, no, hey, Mark, hey, hey, Mark, hey, cap off. Cap yeah, off. Yeah, I appreciate my dog Double D D Demario Davis for being a true champion, a true human, and a true dog on the field. You know what I mean? You inspire me, Cam J. You inspire me to be better, to make me better, man. Y'all boys keep the gas pedal down. 1,000%, man. And y'all just keep doing y'all thing.
Appreciate Double D trapping in with Trust Levels. Appreciate my super extraordinary co-host, Cameron Jordan, the legacy, you know what I mean? For holding it down, being making Trust Levels the podcast of 2020 yeah. and 2021 yeah. and for Bow. the future. So I appreciate y'all boys. Love y'all boys. And tap in, baby. I said, WD, you already got trust level beanie, so now I just owe you a bottle of wine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And you for know sure. I got that joint on deck. I just need to know, do you want that red or that white?